Hello, perfect beauties. Let me know if you like the bangs or not. I just got a haircut, so I feel like I look even more like Asian <laughs> with the bangs. But anyways, today I'm going to be telling you how to have a TEDx talk or how to get on the TEDx stage. And you guys know that I recently did a talk called a tragedy called perfection and this has been like my lifelong goal of being on that red circle being in front of everyone and telling my story in under 18 minutes behind the scenes there was a ton of work and I'm gonna share with you what I did in order to get my uh, TEDx talk and hopefully um, I can inspire you to do yours as well first and foremost there's two different forms of like TED talks there's TED, which is like the global conference that they have, that's the one where they have like really famous speakers like Shonda Rhimes. Sometimes they will invite people who have done TEDx talks before to the TED stage. So then the other locally uh, regional events are called TEDx. So these are organized by either universities or cities or different groups and they feature eight to 10 speakers every year and each person gets up to 18 minutes to tell their story in front of a stage or an auditorium and all that. So I applied for TEDx and I wanted to do a TEDx talk mainly because I wanted to tell my story and I feel like my story is so fundamental to who I am, to what Banish is about and I felt like I had such a strong message to share in which you can check out my talk in the description below. So the first part of applying for the TEDx talks is I really needed to figure out what my core idea was. And I had basically like I would start journaling because I'm somebody who's super ADD, I'm super chaotic, and I had so many ideas, but these ideas would just like be so mumble jumbled. I would start writing about having acne, right? Which, which is kind of, um, part of my story, but then I'd write about being Asian American, which is also part of my story. And then I'd start writing about being a first generation immigrant and then growing up poor. And then even, you know, living off food stamps in the beginning of my childhood days and, um, you know, all the struggles that I went through throughout my life. And before I knew it, it was like literally a hundred page Word document, just of notes of ramblings of thoughts. And I was like, oh my God, this is a hundred pages. There is no way I can submit this to the TED community and have them pick me. I first had to do was figure out what my core idea was and what I decided to stand for. And so your core idea has to be something that it's not about your story, it's about what does your idea mean to other people. So for example, Brene Brown core idea is the power of vulnerability. Cameron Russell's core idea is looks, look, was it looks don't matter? Believe me, I'm a model. Simon Sinek is it's not what you do, it's why you do it. So you have to kind of figure out what that thing was. And so throughout writing my story, and I decided to really focus it on acne because I feel like having acne and starting this company has really shaped me who I am. I kind of eliminated any part that wasn't related to the acne story. So I, I eliminated me studying really hard in high school. I eliminated me growing up really poor. I eliminated me being the only Asian American in my school. Like I had to eliminate so much from that. I had to just figure out like, hey, I wanna just talk about the acne part. From there, from that story of the acne, I had to figure out like, what is the underlying theme and what is like the overall conclusion from this talk? What do I want people to take away from it? And I soon realized that what I want people to take away from it is that the worst thing you can do is try to be perfect because in my struggle with being perfect, it prevented me from being my most authentic self. And once I started making the videos on YouTube and sharing my story and having the courage to share the way, I, like share my skin and my story, that's when everything changed for me and that's when my life really started to change and we should always focus on authenticity, not perfection. So that was kind of like the core idea. So once doing that, I wrote out my talk and again, it was really hard because I have so many ideas. I'm definitely an idea person. So I went from like 100 pages to 50 pages to 20 pages. I think for an 18 minute talk, it came out, I don't remember, like seven pages, six pages. I'm not sure, but it was basically like every single time going through the talk, I had to eliminate, 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 because again, your talk cannot go over 18 minutes and you have to memorize the entire thing. I did work with like a speaking coach or a coach for the talk and she was super, super helpful in terms of helping me like eliminate certain parts. There was one part where I had an anecdote in my talk of like me running on a treadmill. It was really good like analogy and like part of the story, but it didn't really fit 
in the sense of a talk. So film may kind of get rid of like certain aspects of it. And then in terms of the actual like title, which I think is very, very important for a TED talk, I actually presented it to a lot of my team members internally at Banish. Like I think they've heard me go through it at least three times and we all kind of brainstorm different topics for the title. And thank you so much, Grace, for giving the title a tragedy called perfection because I love that because I love the word tragedy. I feel like the word tragedy is so, so strong and the word perfection and perfectionism is super, super strong. So I was able to put that in and I love that title. I love, love, love it. Like it resonates with me. It resonates with my soul. And I think the title, again, is very, very important because it really means that's your core idea. That's what 18 minutes of your talk is about. So after I had kind of the general core idea I started applying for a bunch of different TEDx events and so I had Claire who is my admin she kind of helped me search for some of the events that were around and we had a spreadsheet of different applications for TED talks and the dates and the areas that they were in and all that stuff so I, I literally applied to like, I don't know how many, like 10, 12. I applied to a lot of different TED Talk organizations. And I think because I, I'm not like a known public speaker, I haven't really done public speaking before other than on my YouTube channel. I don't have like a portfolio reel. Like I'm not like a motivational speaker. Like that's not my main job. My main job is making YouTube videos and also, you know, being the CEO of Banish. I think it was a little bit harder for me to get my foot in the door. I also know that if you have like direct connections to the organizers, or whatever in there, I think it is a little bit easier. But for reference, I think like 1% of people who apply get in. I'm not exactly sure in my situation what the percentage was, but it's definitely like 5% or less of people who apply get accepted. So if you don't get in right away, that's totally fine, it's normal. Each application took quite a bit of time. I had to make a video and I had to, you know, write my core idea and write how it applies to the theme of the talk and all that kind of stuff. So I, I applied to a lot of different places. And then I got invited to um, TEDx Georgia Tech, which I'm super, super thankful and grateful for. They put me with Sarthik, who is like the brightest student um, I've worked with. He kind of helped me with my talk and he really challenged me to cut it all down because I was like, no, everything in my life is so important. How can you tell me to cut out this entire paragraph and all this stuff? And I'm super grateful. So they have like people who are there to help coach you and mentor you and help you with your talk and all that kind of stuff and I'm really really grateful because the students who organize the event they are so bright so smart like they're just on it you know kind of thing so then came the process of memorizing for my talk and that was actually I would say the hardest part in terms of like I don't know I think it was like so much harder than I expected memorizing because I am really bad at memorizing. Sometimes when I have to do videos for Banish, it takes me literally 30 minutes to memorize three lines. Like I would be a terrible actress because I just cannot memorize anything for the life of me. And that's actually the big reason why I quit studying pre-med because I just knew I wasn't gonna be able to make it through medical school with all that memorization. So memorizing was super, super, super difficult. I literally would be around the clock working on it, practicing. I practiced in the shower while I was driving in the sauna, while I was walking Lily, while I was working out, like on the airplane, in the airport, everywhere, I was practicing constantly. One thing that really helped for me was, what is it called, doing a memory palace. I don't know if you do this for school or whatnot, but basically, you think of like all the areas in your room or in your house and you associate every single word or every single line with a certain location in your house. So you kind of go like around your room and you start off this line, what is here, what is here, what is here, what is here, what is here. So I would think of like my front door and my front door would be like, <laughs> oh, this is terrible, the suicide rate, suicide rate. And I would think of someone hanging themselves from the front door for teens is like dramatically increased. So that was one of my lines. And then another line was like teens like on social media. And so next to my front door, I have a ping pong table. And so over there, like I was thinking of teens playing ping pong and that would be like teens on social media. And then I had something about the teens spend eight hours a day on their screen. So I have my printer, which is across my ping pong table and the printer would be printing out page, like eight pages. And then next to my printer, I have a sink and it was just saying how teens are depressed. So I would imagine a teen like throwing water on themselves because they're like so sad from crying. So I would try to locate different parts of my house 
and associate them with different like lines of my script and that really helped. What also really helped is I would take my script and I would block it into paragraph chunks and I would actually write the first letter of every word and that would really help me memorize the talk and I was actually like, I don't know, it's just weird because like I'm so bad at memorizing so I had to really resort to a lot of these tricks on doing that. I also had flashcards. I had mobile flashcards on Quizlet so I would put one of the lines and then I on the other side of the flashcard I would have the line that goes after it and then also I had a lot of issues with transition words so I would forget what the next sentence would be after this word so I would put the end of the word and then on the other side of the card I would put the next word after so once I got into the first couple of words of the next sentence I knew what to say but it was just that like transition that was really hard for me and that's always been hard for me in terms of my memorization <laughs> skills that was that and then um you know memorizing I also worked you know again with a coach and she helped me with the stage presence. I also had to figure out what I was gonna wear for my TED Talk, which like I was obsessing over this. Like I bought this like beautiful blue dress from BB and I thought that's what I was gonna wear, but it ended up like even water spilling on it because it was made out of ran. Ran would cause a stain. So I actually had a big stain in the front and I also thought like, I don't know, it was just too wrinkly. So then I tried on a couple of jumpsuits and I purchased a couple of jumpsuits. I had my team help me vote on them and so we kind of came to two jumpsuits from BB and I was going to wear the one with the gold buttons you see here but what happened when I got to Atlanta where the talk was hosted, um, I felt like there would be a risk of my bra showing through or my bra cup like seeping through. I, I just didn't want that like on such a professional stage, any kind of undergarment like showing. So I actually brought another jumpsuit, which I'm super glad. Before I got to Atlanta, I actually had this tailor who spent an inordinate amount of time tailoring the jumpsuit perfectly. He even brought in the waist, the jumpsuit like from BB, like sometimes it's very revealing, right? And so he actually brought in the bust and actually put in a piece of fabric in there. He also made the straps thicker and then he put a hook where you could put my bra in. And I just felt a lot more secure in that jumpsuit because I felt like there was no way that my underwear could be showing through there. So I decided to go with that jumpsuit and I'm glad I did. I think it's really important when you're on the stage to wear something that just kind of flows, not something too bright, not something too patterned. So mine was like a very dark, was it navy or was it a black color? So it kind of looks good against, you know, the stage. So I do like the outfit choice that I made. I'm glad that I went with it. I'm super glad that I spent a lot of money on that tailor because that was the only time I ever wore that jumpsuit. So then like just practicing, I think I literally practiced 200 times a day, I'm not exaggerating. And then the day before I just practice, 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 practice. Now, one thing that kind of tripped me off was the night before we did kind of these rehearsal things and I got a lot of feedback over, oh, you should do this or you should do that or you should do that. But like for me, it gave me anxiety over like the night before the talk to include all of these like changes. It gave me a lot of anxiety because it made me think like, is it not good the way it is? Like, you know, all this stuff. And ironically, I'm a perfectionist. So I was like, do I listen to this person's feedback or do I not? I did listen to some of it, but I couldn't implement all of it because it was literally the night before. And unfortunately, the night of my TED Talk, I literally slept for like half an hour. I had the absolute worst migraine and I don't know if it was from stress or maybe I was in the sauna for too long. I do a lot of saunas for my psoriasis. I really had a migraine. It was like a splitting headache the night before and I barely slept. I slept like half an hour. And when I went to the auditorium at like 8 a.m., I was literally like dying. My eyes were bloodshot red, all this stuff. But <laughs> power of coffee and power of adrenaline, power of triptans and excedrin and all the medicines I could, I could take to get rid of my migraine, I made it on stage. I didn't mess up a single time. Actually, I did mess up a little bit. Like I forgot to click the clicker during a certain time but that's like I didn't mess up in terms of like forgetting anything or tripping like that would have been awful so it went really well I didn't mess up a single time but I was on so much like headache medicine I couldn't actually hear out of my ears like my ears are so filled with fluid or something so you just don't see all these things behind the scenes oh and then I also wanted to share that in terms of how I was practicing I actually asked for the measurement of the red circle, the rug that you stand on for the TED, the TED red circle. I actually asked the organizers how large it was and I actually measured it and I actually put like, like a circumference string around my room and I would practice 
walking around the red circle, walking in the stage, out the stage, figuring out what to do with my hands. Like every single word that I would speak on the TED stage, I had a hand motion for that. So everything was very, very well coordinated. And I also like practice how to look at people on stage, where to look. Like there's just so many intricacies of public ski speaking, especially on this grand, you know, TEDx stage that people don't realize. And so memorizing the lines is just like the bare minimum. Then you have the expressions and you know the way you move and making sure you're not gonna trip and how are you gonna move around the stage and all that kind of stuff. So it's funny, I have clips of me at the airport while waiting for my flight to um, Atlanta, like practicing in the gate area, like with this little like circumference circle thing and moving around and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely worked my ass off on this talk because it's gonna be something that I have for the rest of my life. Like anytime you Google me, like there's gonna be my talk and I'm super, super proud of it because it is everything that I believe for and stand for and I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to share it with you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys learned how to give a TED Talk and I hope that you guys all have the opportunity to tell your story on stage, whether it be a TED event or not. As long as you have the opportunity to tell your story, whether it's on a stage or on a YouTube video or on Instagram story, whatever. I have learned to not be ashamed of my story. I think a lot of times I was so ashamed of who I was because it wasn't cool, it wasn't popular, it wasn't accepted. And now I've learned that my story is who I am. It's a history of me. And to not share it with other people is almost like, it's almost like a discredit to who I am as a person. So thank you all so much. And don't forget to watch my talk. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.